In this video, I will show you how to eliminate 99% of all mod conflicts with just three clicks. We'll talk about load order, why it's important, and how to manage it with a tool called Loot. Before I get started, remember to like, sub, and comment. It really helps me out. I also want to point you all to my Discord. We got some really knowledgeable people over there that know way more than I do. Come say hi, and if you're someone that knows their mods and wants to help out beginners, we do need more moderators. I'm sure most of you have heard the term load order while modding your game before. Be it on a forum, mod page, or even my own Discord. But what does it do, and why is it important? More specifically, how does it compare to mod installation order? Let's start with the first question. Load order is exactly what it sounds like. It's the order ESP files and ESM files are loaded into the game. This process occurs when you first start the game. Recall that these files are what tell the game what changes are included in a mod. If you need a better refresher of what these files do and what files mods consist of, check out the MO2 intro video in the top right. You should have that information down pat at this point. All right. Well, the next logical question is, why does the load order of these files matter? To answer that, let me give you a hypothetical. Let's say you have two mods that change an NPC, Nazim for example. While the mod loaded last would get final say in the changes. Sometimes, these kind of changes can cause game-breaking conflicts, so a well-organized order can potentially remove many of these. But isn't this conflict resolved by mod installation order? No. And this is where things can get a bit confusing. To better understand the difference between load order and installation order, let's break down game changes created by mods into two categories. The first type of change is one that is handled entirely by the plugin file, be it an ESM or ESP. Apart from that, these changes don't need any other files to take effect. The second type of change is one that is created with the help of other files, be it textures, meshes, scripts, and so forth. These changes have pointers in the plugin that tell the game where the external file can be found. When we are dealing with installation order, we are only resolving the latter of these two types of changes, i.e. only direct file name conflicts. With load order on the other hand, we are dealing with changes made internally inside any plugin files we mentioned before. So if plugins 1 and 2 both change Nazim's clothes, only the plugin loaded last will have noticeable effects in game. Now if that was confusing, bear with me because there is a little bit more. Load order also affects the order BSA archives are loaded into the game. That means if there are two identical files in two archives, the file contained in the last loaded plugin's BSA will show up in game. Again, seriously go back and watch my MO2 intro video and really have these files memorized. Basically what this means is that first BSA archives are loaded, followed by any loose files you may have, i.e. loose files always take priority over anything contained in a BSA archive. So if you got lost, that's okay. Just go back in the video and take another listen. I still have a difficult time getting this stuff straight. Just do your best to go through and memorize this information, as it really is the basis of what Bethesda modding is. If you can get this down, you'll have a much easier time resolving conflicts, troubleshooting, and really just getting through frustrating modding moments. All right, so let's hop into Mod Organizer 2 so I can show you where you can find your load order. In MO2, you can easily see the current load order of your ESMs and ESPs in the Plugins tab of the right pane. If you click and hold any of the non-grayed out plugins, you can actually adjust this load order by hand. The grayed out ones are part of the base game, so Skyrim, the DLCs, and Update are all contained inside of your game folder. In the really olden days of Bethesda modding, before we had any fancy load order sorting tools, we would actually have to change this manually in the game's launcher. That meant actually knowing the changes created by each and every mod, then organizing them so that no game-breaking conflicts occurred. Something completely doable with a few mods, but a much more difficult task with a hundred. Now while you still really should know the overall changes made by each mod, this type of complete knowledge is not necessary anymore. Enter the Load Order Optimization Tool, or LOOT for short. This handy little program brings down the mod information learning curve by automatically sorting your load order 
and arranging it to best fit something known as a load order master list. The master list is exactly what it sounds like, at least kind of. If you were to take every mod that ever existed for Skyrim and place them into one giant load order so that everything was in a correct, I say that in air quotes, location, you would have a loot master list. Now this isn't an ideal world. If you weren't aware, Skyrim has a 255 plugin limit. Once you reach that point, the game simply won't load. So obviously, there's no way in hell you'll ever end up using that many mods, even with workarounds. Not that you'd want to. Secondly, many mods simply just are not compatible with one another, or cause major issues, so you'll just want to avoid using them together anyways. But, if you're a normal smart user that makes sure their load order is free of such conflicts, you'll find that using loot to sort your load order is actually really handy, especially when you're a beginner or just someone that tests mods frequently. So, this sounds great. Now let me fill you in on the real world limitations of this tool. Firstly, as far as I'm aware, each plugin in the loot master list is categorized on a case-by-case -case basis. If you know better, let me know, either way it shouldn't affect the validity of my point. What this means is that every time a plugin gets updated in any major and sometimes minor way, there is no way of being 100% certain with the use of loot alone that the master list information on that plugin is accurate. This is because something in the plugin has been changed. Now sure, most updates won't add anything big at this point in Skyrim's modding years, and some mods have even reached final release, but it's still something to keep in mind. The place loot gets a little more spotty, from what I've seen, is when it comes to patch plugins that resolve issues between one or two other mods, and if you're using any sort of patch that you created yourself, like a creation kit mod, bashed patch, or any generated plugin, for me that's perma, you should probably keep a very close eye on those. You may not know what all those are yet, but that's okay, I'll be going into them in the future, just keep this information in mind. The other thing is that you're also sacrificing the neatness of a self-managed load order, as visually, loot appears to be as organized as a typical college undergrad. Now with that out of the way, I in no means want to discourage you from using this tool. In fact, if you're a beginner, I highly encourage you do, as it dramatically lowers the knowledge curve when it comes to knowing what every single mod does that came out in the last 8 years. In most cases, it will even save your butt by catching incompatibilities you missed because you didn't read the posts tab on Nexus. Wink wink. Alright, that was extensive and long-winded. Let's go ahead and install the damn thing. Head over to the official loot GitHub at loot.github.io. Hit the big download button, and on the next page select loot.installer.exe. This of course is a tool, so we won't be downloading it with MO2, even if you did go through Nexus. Run the installer from your browser or downloads folder. Select your native tongue, point the installer to where you want loot installed to. For us, that's in our mod tools or utilities folder, whatever you named it in the first video. Hit OK and Next. We are not going to create a desktop shortcut since loot needs to be run from MO2 anyway, and install. Go ahead and uncheck run loot, because again, this won't do anything for us. Go ahead and finish. Now, if we open up MO2 and check the executables drop-down box, we'll see that the MO2 devs were kind enough to locate loot for us. If for some reason, loot isn't there, add it like you would any other tool. Hit edit, name it loot, in binary, navigate to the loot installation folder, and select loot.exe, and then add. Easy. Before I go ahead and run loot, let me just point out the sort button right here. Now, I know it's real accessible and kind of clickbaity, like this video's title, but for the love of God, please don't use it. You're losing many of the benefits from actually running loot in its entirety, and it further obscures load order sorting, which by its nature is not a foolproof process. At least the full loot application actually points out serious mod conflicts and gives you some degree of control when sorting. Just go ahead and run loot from the executables list. Alright, so now's probably a good time to tell you that I have switched over to my actual load order for these tutorials. At this point, I figure you're well informed enough to realize that everyone's load order is different, so as not to freak out when you see that my list of mods is entirely different from yours. If you've not done that yet, please do. Plus, I'm sick of switching game installs. Anyway, let's go over everything a beginner like yourself needs to know about loot. Let's go ahead and start by sorting. 
This is done with the three horizontal bars at the top right. When you do this, two things will happen. Loot will automatically update its master list of mods, and obviously sort your load order. Now this is when most beginner modders click out and go play their game. Don't do that. Instead, look at the general information. This is essentially everything loot has detected with your load order. Obviously, master list revision and date is the version of your master list and its publication date. Total plugins are all the plugins in the virtual directory, and active plugins are only the ones that will be loaded into the game. Total messages are all the messages flagged by loot after it's looked at your load order. That leaves the other three, warnings, errors, and dirty plugin messages as your main concern. If we scroll down, we can actually see our plugin load order. It's synced up with Mod Organizer 2, so what you see there will be the same thing after you close this app. Most messages you see won't have highlights on them. These are just important information that you should read and consider, not necessarily something that's a problem. Warnings are highlighted in yellow and indicate issues detected by loot. These are usually easily fixable. Most of the time, they just tell you that you're missing patches needed for two mods to work correctly. Loot will actually tell you where these can be found, and sometimes will even link you to their pages. The other type of warning is a dirty plugin notification. These should be cleaned with SSE Edit. I'll talk about that in one of the next two videos, so don't worry if you don't know anything about that. Errors are real easy to spot. They're highlighted in red. These issues usually tell you that there are two mods that just don't work together, and in that case, your best bet would probably be to do more research into them and figure out why they don't work. Then, either uninstall one or live with the consequences. As you can see here, Loot tells me that Immersive Citizens is not compatible with JK Skyrim. It even links us to the mods compatibility page. But that is a load of bull. So take this as an example of a time when Loot is wrong. Remember, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to catch these mistakes, which is why I always suggest reading mod descriptions and posts. Let me tell you what's going on in my particular case. While it's true that Immersive Citizens was not built to be used with JK Skyrim, and that Immersive Citizens will not retain all of its functionality, the average individual would be very hard pressed to find something out of the ordinary when using them together. This is one of those times where the loot developers are taking the mod author's words as a fact, but what they don't take into consideration is context. You see, the mod author of Immersive Citizens actually claims that all mods that alter the behavior of his in any way are incompatible. While on one side he's kind of right, I also think that he should tell users to decide on their own whether they are willing to accept the trade-offs. But then again, I also don't have a mod with almost 4 million unique downloads, so I don't know what it's like to be bombarded with questions from people that don't do their own research. Or do I? Regardless, moral of the story is, loot isn't an all-knowing machine, so read everything it's telling you and decide for yourself if it's accurate. As you can see, I have a lot of other warnings as well. Most of them are for patches that I have merged, so loot doesn't detect those. The rest are dirty plugins that I'm keeping around for the SSE edit video. So now that I've looked over everything, and made sure that nothing is unaccounted for, I can click apply at the top, and this will save the load order. The final thing I want to show you is how to manually tell loot where to load plugins. This is handy for when it makes mistakes loading plugins before something it's not supposed to. Of course, you can always do this in Mod Organizer 2 directly, by clicking and dragging the plugins, but then you need to do that again next time you sort with loot. The easier thing to do is to click the three dot icon for the incorrectly placed plugin. I'm going to show you this on the Dragonborn DLC, even though it has been placed properly. Select Edit Metadata. As you can see, a new menu shows up, and if we select Load After, we can see the list of plugins that Dragonborn needs to be loaded after. Loot has already automatically added Dawnguard and Hearthfires to the list, but I'm also going to add Update.esm by clicking on the plus icon. After that, I type in Update.esm in the file name, and hit the floppy disk to save. Voila! Now Dragonborn will certainly load after update. Again, this wasn't necessary as loot placed it correctly to begin with, but now you know what to do when it doesn't. Dragonborn now also has a profile icon, showing that we've added our own custom changes. At this point, we can close out of loot and we're good to go. 
Obviously, there is more to loot than that, so you can explore it further if you wish. But this is the most important stuff. I will have a video in the future going over everything loot has to offer, but for now, this is it. Honestly, most won't need to know much more than this anyway. Alright, so go down below this video, give it a like, leave a comment, and sub if you haven't already. It helps spread these videos around the internet. Remember to check out my Discord to ask questions or just chat. There are some really cool people over there. Next video is to the left if it's out, and the overview of my guides is to the right. See you in the next one.